CT Physics and Imaging, a guide for technologists, chapter three, systems and components, the pathway of image production. The physics and mathematics of CT image production are extraordinarily complicated, but the general concept is actually very simple. A CT scanner is basically a 3D x-ray camera. The x-ray tube rotates around the patient collecting hundreds of views, also called projections, of the same anatomic region. Each projection represents a different perspective of the same anatomy. When these projections are compiled together, they can be digitally reconstructed into viewable slices. The basic steps of image production in CT are very similar to concepts in digital radiography. Step one, the x-ray tube directs an x-ray beam towards the patient. Step two, the x-ray beam is attenuated by the patient. Step three, the remnant photons are collected by radiation detectors. Step four, the detectors create electrical radiation readings. Step five, the radiation readings are converted to a digital signal. Step six, the raw digital signal is processed into digital images. And step seven, the digital image is sent to a monitor or storage device. Simple, right? Not completely, but it is helpful to know that the basic processes are the same. The main difference with CT is in step six, where hundreds of individual projections must be compiled into a single volume of data and reorganized into slices. Incredibly, this process takes only a few milliseconds. This chapter discusses the physical systems of the CT scanner and the components that make image production possible. A CT scanner usually includes three connected systems. The scanner gantry and patient table, the data acquisition system, called the DAS, and the operator's console. Each of these systems supports different elements of the image production process. Figure 3.1. Canon Aquilion large bore CT scanner demonstrates three interconnected systems of a CT scanner. One, the gantry and patient table. Two, the operator's console, the computer monitor and keyboard. And three, the data acquisition system below the monitor, the scanner gantry. Quote, I didn't know I was having an MRI, says the bewildered patient upon seeing the CT scanner. It's true. CT scanners and MRI scanners look somewhat similar but the imaging technology and physical components are very different. Technologists are often surprised to learn that most of the image production processes in CT actually take place inside of the gantry itself. The gantry provides physical support for several important components. The x-ray tube, detectors, that's the detector array, collimators, the high voltage generator, and the analog to digital converter called the ADC. Some gantries even house the entire data acquisition system. In total, the gantry may weigh in excess of 4,000 pounds, most of which is actually rotating with the x-ray tube around the patient during the scan. Included in this spiraling metal donut is an anode heated to 3,600 degrees Fahrenheit and a generator producing 140,000 volts of electricity, but no need for alarm. The x-ray tube. The CT x-ray tube follows the same principles of x-ray production used in general x-ray tubes. This is discussed in detail in chapter two. Milliamperage, or MA, influences the intensity of the beam. The specific MA used during an exam can be set by the technologist. A preferred method is to set the MA to a variable technique that modulates the MA based on the thickness of the body part. Kilovoltage peak, or KVP, controls the energy of the beam but also influences intensity. The ideal KVP setting is usually provided with the default protocol for any examination type. The KVP should be increased only with a significant increase in part thickness and never exceed 140 KVP. The technical factors used during a scan are a balance between image noise, that's model, and patient dose. Increases in MA and KVP both decrease image noise at the expense of increasing patient dose. The optimal technique is the one that results in minimal noise or model while keeping the patient dose as low as possible. Generators. Electrical power supplied to the x-ray tube by a high voltage generator, which is very similar to those used in general radiography. This generator is sometimes housed in the gantry itself and functions to supply the variable KVP and MA as required for each protocol. 
The two potential is variable at specific KVP stations, usually 80, 100, 120, and 140 KVP. The current is variable at specific stations between 20 and 500 MA. The incoming power supply to the X-ray system, which is 220 volts alternating current, is not capable of producing these technical settings, so the electrical current must be changed. For the filament circuit, a step-down transformer is used to create the high amperage necessary for thermionic emission. For the X-ray tube circuit, a step-up transformer is used to create the high voltage necessary for X-ray production. Rectifiers within the circuit convert alternating current into direct current to ensure electrons flow only from cathode to anode in the tube. Detector Array Like the X-ray tube, radiation detectors are mounted inside the gantry and spiral around the patient during imaging. The whole assembly of detectors is called the Detector Array. These detectors are responsible for collecting photons that have passed through the patient and converting them into a measurable electrical signal. The signal produced by the detectors is proportional to the number of photons that pass through the patient at that particular area. This information is sometimes called an attenuation measurement or a transmission reading because the signal represents the number of transmitted photons compared to the number of attenuated or absorbed photons. These readings are ultimately used to create a digital image of the patient's anatomy based on differences in radiation attenuation. Dense materials, like bone, attenuate more radiation and result in a lower signal from the detectors. Less dense materials, like air or fat, attenuate less radiation and result in a higher signal from the detector. Figure 3.2. A CT detector array is very similar to a digital radiography receptor, except the panel is much wider and curved to align with the divergence of the X-ray beam. Detector configurations. In the beginning, CT scanners were designed with just a single X-ray detector. Scanning took several hours as the x-ray tube and detector slowly moved around the patient, collecting just one tiny projection at a time. Today, CT scanners use a very large arrangement of detectors, organized into detector rows called slices or detector channels. Terms like 8 slice, 16 slice, 64 slice, etc. simply refer to the number of detector rows in the detector array. Having more slices is advantageous because the x-ray beam is wider and more information can be collected in one rotation of the beam, which makes the scan faster. A CT scan may or may not engage all detector rows depending on the scan type. Figure 3.3. Detectors in CT are organized into slices. A 4-slice scanner has just 4 rows of detectors. A 16-slice scanner has 16 rows of detectors and collects 4 times as much information with each rotation of the tube. The actual width of the detector rows or slices varies between vendors. Toshiba scanners use detector rows that are all 0.5 millimeters wide, but other vendors use detector rows that are larger, like 0.625 millimeters, and some scanners even have detector rows of different thicknesses within the same detector array. For example, the innermost rows may be 0.625 millimeters, but the outer rows may be 1.25 millimeters. These different detector configurations are called uniform and non-uniform. See figure 4.7. Uniform detector arrays have rows that are all of equal thickness. Non-uniform detector arrays have rows that increase in thickness towards the outer rows. Each type of detector has its own advantages and disadvantages. Uniform detector arrays can produce very thin slices of data for all detector rows, but a higher radiation dose is required in order to minimize image noise. Non-uniform detector arrays require less radiation dose, but the slices are thicker and show less detail. In summary, thin detector slices show more detail but require more radiation, Thick detector slices show less detail but require less radiation. A non-uniform detector array includes both thick and thin rows. 
The inner rows are used for scans requiring high spatial resolution, like angiography and MSK, and the outer rows are added when high spatial resolution is not necessary, like routine brain and body scans. Beam width. The beam width is the width of the x-ray beam in the x-axis, also called the collimation. The number of detector rows or slices has an effect on the beam width. For example, a 64 slice scanner is capable of creating a wider beam than a 16 slice scanner. This is why the 64 slice scanner can be faster. More anatomy can be scanned with each rotation of the tube. Depending on the protocol, all detector rows may or may not be in use during a given scan. This also affects the beam width. For example, a high resolution scan of the chest may only use the four innermost detector rows. If these inner detector rows are each 0.625 millimeters in thickness, the total beam width is equal to four rows times 0.625 millimeters per row equals 2.5 millimeters. Understanding how to calculate the beam width is not very helpful during actual scanning, but it certainly will aid in passing your registry exam. Case study, beam width. A CT scan of the abdomen is performed using a 16 slice scanner with 0.5 millimeter detector rows. If the scan protocol uses all 16 rows, how wide is the x-ray beam? Here's the solution. If there are 16 detector rows and each row is 0.5 millimeters wide, the total beam width is calculated as 16 rows times 0.5 millimeters per row equals eight millimeters. The beam will be eight millimeters wide during the scan. Collimators. Just like in general radiography, collimators in CT do the job of resizing the x-ray beam to match the desired exposure field. Essentially, the collimators ensure the beam width is equal to the width of the activated detectors. Why would you expose 64 detector rows if only eight are in use? This would add to the patient's radiation dose without adding any new information to the image. Figure 3.4. Pre-patient collimators shape the beam as it exits the x-ray tube. This protects the patient from needless radiation dose. Detector collimators cover the detectors that are not in use to reduce scatter and improve image quality. Both sets of collimators are adjusted based on the detector rows in use. There are two sets of collimators in CT, pre-patient collimators and detector collimators. Pre-patient collimators are positioned before the patient and shape the beam as it exits the tube housing. These collimators are adjusted to ensure the x-ray beam width, that's called the geometry, is only as wide as the activated detector rows. Detector collimators cover the detector rows that are not in use. This effectively reduces scatter radiation striking the detectors and increases subject contrast. Data transformation and transmission. Anatomic information collected by the CT scanner passes through several devices before it is viewed by the technologist. In order, these devices are detectors, the data acquisition system, or the DAS, the computer system and array processor, and output devices. Detectors. As discussed above, the function of a detector is to collect transmitted radiation and convert it to an electrical signal. Data acquisition system, or DAS. Electrical signals from the detector array are useless until the attenuation information they carry is converted into a digital signal. This process takes place in the data acquisition system. The DAS performs three major functions. It measures the transmitted radiation from the detectors, converts electrical signals into a digital signal, and finally transmits the digital signal to the main computer. Information leaving the DAS is digital or binary attenuation readings known as raw data. Raw data is only a digital matrix of numbers that cannot be viewed by the technologist. This information is considered unprocessed. Computer and array processor. Raw or unprocessed data must be further manipulated into usable information that can be viewed, reprocessed, or stored. This process is called reconstruction, and it is performed by the computer. 
The array processor is simply the dedicated electronic circuit through which the computer system operates at high speeds. This includes microprocessors and storage devices. Information leaving the computer is called image data, and it can be viewed, archived, and processed. In summary, detectors capture and convert X-ray photons into analog electrical signals, also known as radiation readings. The Data Acquisition System, or DAS, measures analog electrical signals and converts them to digital raw data. The computer system reconstructs raw data into usable image data. Finally, output devices include computer monitors, packs, etc. The Operator's Console. The operator's console is where the magic happens, like setting the KVP, MA, slice thickness, and other technical parameters. General tasks performed at the control panel include selecting patient ID and scan protocol, setting technical parameters, setting scan boundaries, initiating the scan, viewing image data, post-processing image data, and sending image data for reading and archiving, only a few functions of the CT scanning process have to be performed at the gantry itself. This includes moving the gantry table, called the couch, and centering the patient in the scanner. This is why CT really is the perfect job for the technologist who would rather image the patient from a safe and sanitary distance.